Hello students, today we will be discussing about schools of psychology. In the previous module you have understood the concept of psychology, the different branches of psychology. Now let us focus on what the schools of psychology speak about the subject matter of psychology. When we say schools, naturally you might be wondering like what these uh, schools are about. When we say like schools of psychology or schools of a particular subject, these reflect the different views expressed by the theorists who are very popular in the field and what they were trying to convey about the subject matter of that particular discipline. In this module, we will be discussing three main important schools, structuralism, functionalism and psychoanalysis. So, all these schools speak about what should be the subject matter of psychology what are the techniques that can be used to understand the human behavior. Each has its own contribution to the field of psychology. Now, let us start with structuralism. Structuralism indeed is the first school of thought in psychology. It is a theory of consciousness developed by Wilhelm Wundt and his student Edward Bradford Tischner. There is always a debate who deserves the credit for finding this field of psychology, but it is widely accepted that Wundt created the foundation on which Tischner expanded. Wundt's aim was to record thoughts and sensations and to analyze them into their constituent elements in the same way how a chemist analyzes chemical compounds in order to get at the underlying structure. So, even Wilhelm Wundt felt to understand the human behavior, we have to understand the elements of the behavior. So, the school of psychology founded by Wundt is known as voluntarism, that is the process of organizing the mind. Hence, he is known as father of psychology, as he also established the first psychology lab at University of Leipzig in 1879 in order to study conscious experience and this laid the foundation for the discipline of psychology to claim itself as a science. So, there is no doubt that psychology should be called as a science or not. It has been reviewed in different articles that psychology can be called as a science because many experiments are conducted to understand the human behavior both in the lab and also in the field. Wundt's theory was developed and promoted by his student Edward Tischner, who described his system as structuralism or the analysis of the basic elements that constitute the mind. Tischner said that only observable events constitute the signs and that any speculation concerning unobservable events have no place in the society. Hence, everything that is studied under the psychology should be scientific and it should be observable. Only then it can be called as a science. The second important concept given by structuralists is mind and consciousness. Tishno believed the mind was the accumulated experience of a lifetime. He believed that he could understand reasoning and the structure of the mind if he could define and categorize what should be the basic components of the mind and the rules or the principles by which these components interact. Now, the next question is what should be the elements of the mind? Tishner's theory began with the question of what each element of the mind is. He concluded from his research that there were three types of mental elements constituting conscious experience. The first element is sensations. These sensations are elements of perceptions. The second element is images that is ideas, elements of ideas and affections. These are elements of emotions. So, all these three basic elements constitute human behavior according to the structuralists. These elements could be broken down into respective properties which he called it or which he determined as quality, intensity, duration, 
clearness and extensity. What the quality of the behavior is about when we say like the water is cold or the sun is red, we are speaking about the quality of what we are perceiving and this distinguishes each element from the others. Then what is intensity? Intensity refers to how strong or light it is, how loud or low it is or how bright a particular environment is. So, these reflect about the intensity of the situations. So, all these are again the sensations, what we are perceiving, what we are looking around, what we are feeling. Then the third element is that is the third quality is duration. Duration refers to the course of a sensation over time, how long it lasts. For example, like when you have seen a vehicle passing through just for a fraction of a second you might have sensed it or if an event you are witnessing it, you are standing there and witnessing probably it may last for a couple of minutes. So, what is the duration of your sensation and then the clearness that is the extensity, role of attention in your consciousness. How can you give a description of a particular incident? So, the more clearer, the more attentive you are to a particular situation, the better the description that you are able to give. So, these are the different kind of the qualities that can be attributed to our sensations. Both sensations and images contained all these qualities. However, affections were lacking both clearness and extensity. Images and affections could be broken down further into just clusters of sensations. Therefore, by following this train of thinking, all thoughts were images which being constructed from elementary sensations meant that all complex reasoning and thought could eventually be broken down into just the sensations which he could get at through introspection. So, how do we understand whatever sensations, images and affections that we are experiencing or someone else is experiencing? We need to measure what is our perception level, what is our consciousness level, what is our attention level or at what level the emotion of a particular person is. So, the technique that has been introduced by the structuralist in order to measure or understand or assess the human behavior is introspection. The main tool Tishner used to try to determine the different components of consciousness was introspection. What do you mean by introspection? Literally it means looking within that is to try to describe a person's memory, perceptions, cognitive processes and motivations. In fact, Tishner writes in his systematic psychology, a very popular book, the state of consciousness which is to be the matter of psychology can become an object of immediate knowledge only by way of introspection or self-awareness. And in his book, An Outline of Psychology, he states, within the sphere of psychology, introspection is the final and only court of appeal that psychological evidence cannot be other than introspective evidence. Tishner also laid strict guidelines for the reporting of an introspective analysis. The subject would be presented with an object like a pencil. The subject would then report the characteristics of that pencil that is what is the color of the pencil, what is the length of the pencil, but the subject would be instructed not to report the name of the object that is pencil because that will not describe the raw data of what the subject was experiencing. Tishner referred to this as the stimulus error. Now, when we speak about the elements of the human behavior, are these elements independent or is there any interaction? The research conducted by the structuralists especially Wound and Tishner, they said there is an interaction of the elements. Structuralism always like questions how the mental elements should be combined and interacted with each other to form a conscious experience. From the research conducted by Tishner, he concluded largely 
based on the ideas of associationism. In particular, Tishner focuses on the law of contiguity, which means the idea that the thought of something will tend to cause thoughts of things that are usually experienced along with it. For example, when I am asking you about your 10th class school and other aspects of it, immediately what happens? All your associations related to the school, related to the city where you have studied, related to your classmates with whom you had studied, your best friend, the kind of the interaction that you had, the kind of the playground that you have enjoyed. So, all these ideas immediately come to your mind in order to respond to my question related to your 10th class. So, this can happen with anything. The moment you think of something, all the related associated ideas will come back to your mind. Tishner rejected Wundt's notions of aperception and creative synthesis, which means voluntary action, which were the basis for Wundt's voluntarism. In fact, Tishner argued attention was simply a manifestation of the clearness property within the sensation. This clearness is one of the characteristics which we see in our sensations. Now, when we say like behavior, is it like completely a psychological, a mental behavior or it can also be associated with the physical aspects that is whether it is related to the body functioning. So, structuralists strongly argued for the interaction or for the association of physical and mental relationship. Once Tishner identified the elements of the mind and their interaction his theory then asks the question of why the elements interact in the way they do. In particular, Tishner was interested in the relationship between conscious experience and the physical processes. Tishner believed that physiological processes provide a continuous substratum that gives psychological process a continuity they would otherwise would not have. Therefore, the nervous system does not cause conscious experience, but it can be used to explain some characteristics of mental events. However, in spite of the contribution laid by the structuralists, it was also criticized by number of theorists belonging to that particular era. What is this criticism about? Structuralism has faced a large amount of criticism particularly from the school of psychology functionalism. The main critic of structuralism was its focus on introspection as the method by which to gain an understanding of conscious experience. Critics argued that self-analysis was not feasible since introspective students cannot appreciate the processes or mechanisms of their own mental processes. Introspection therefore yielded different results depending on who was using it and what they were speaking. For example, if you ask small children to introspect, can they introspect? Can they reason out? They cannot use the introspection to the maximum benefit. Similarly, if you have to use the introspection with the mentally challenged students, can they report their conscious experiences? Can, can they report their sensations? It is not possible. So, introspection as a technique has its own limitations. Some critics also pointed out that introspective techniques actually resulted in retrospection. That means, they are trying to recall to memorize a sensation rather than the sensation itself. Behaviorists also rejected the idea of the conscious experience as a worthy topic in psychology because behaviorists believed that the subject matter of scientific psychology should be strictly operationalized in an objective and measurable way. Because the notion of a mind could not be objectively measured, it was not worth further inquiry. That is what behavior is criticized. However, radical behaviorism includes thinking, feeling and private events in its theory and analysis of psychology. Structuralism also believes that the mind could be dissected into its individual parts and which then form a conscious experience. 
This also received criticism from the Gestalt school of psychology. Gestalt psychologists argue that the mind cannot be broken down into individual elements. However, in spite of all these theoretical attacks, structuralism was criticized for excluding and ignoring important developments happening outside of the structuralism. For instance, structuralism did not concern with the study of animal behavior and personality. It was only focusing on mind, elements of the mind, how that can be divided into different components. So, Tishner himself was criticized for not using his psychology to help answer practical problems, but instead he was only interested in seeking pure knowledge that to him was more important than commonplace issues. However, still if you look at the contemporary structuralism, researchers are still working to offer objective experimental approaches to measure conscious experience particularly within the field of cognitive psychology and in some ways carrying on the torch of Tishner's ideas. It is working on the same type of issues such as sensations and perceptions. Today many introspective methodologies are done under highly controlled situations and are understood to be subjective and retrospective proponents argue that psychology can still gain useful information from using introspection in this case. Hope you have understood the concept of structuralism, the subject matter of structuralism and also the criticism leveled against the structuralism. Now let us proceed to another important school of psychology that is functionalism. You might have read in some of the books about William James. The first book on psychology has been written by William James. So, he is the famous American psychologist who was an advocate of functionalism. Functionalism was formed as a reaction to structuralism and denied the importance or value of introspection. This functionalism school of thought focused more on understanding the biological processes behind and purpose of human consciousness rather than the inner workings of thinking. While structuralism tried to understand the individual parts of going to the supermarket that is leaving the house, walking to the store, choosing ingredients, paying the bill etc. Functionalism tackled the root of why we have to go to the store in the first place. So, here the reason is they are searching the answer that we need to get the food for survival. That is the purpose of behavior they are trying to understand, the purpose of a mind, the reasons of mind functioning they are trying to emphasize in the functionalism. Functionalism is concerned with explaining the function or purpose of certain forms of behavior namely that of consciousness or our other internal mental states. This theoretical perspective on psychology sought causal relationships between internal states like being happy and external behaviors like laughter. Functionalism was heavily influenced by Darwin's evolutionary theory. Whereas Darwin was concerned with evolution of a species in terms of natural selection of physical attributes, hope you all remember think of survival of the fittest. James was preoccupied with the evolutionary value or function of specific behaviors and mindsets. His classic text the principles of psychology used the phrase evolutionary psychology to emphasize that certain behaviors operate in the same way as instincts. What do you mean by an instinct? It is an inherited predisposition to respond to certain stimuli in adaptive ways. A key example of an instinct is that of the sneeze. We are predisposed to respond to a nasal irritant with a rapid blast of air that is the adaptive value of a sneeze. In the same vein, James theorized that the mind's complex processes 
had evolved because their life preserving capabilities and to understand those complicated processes one had to ask what functions they perform what is the function of consciousness if structuralists have studied the components of consciousness the structure of consciousness functionalists try to understand what are the functions of consciousness james came to understand consciousness as a process that allows us to both consider the past present and future and to plan ahead in order to adapt our behavior to the current circumstances james argued against the structuralist position that states of consciousness can be broken into constituent parts coining the phrase stream of consciousness james proposed that mental life is a unity that flows and changes hence we can only see consciousness as a continuum but we cannot break down into the parts the function of consciousness is to ensure survival for example when you are walking on the road why you are very conscious in crossing the road or while driving that is to save yourself and also to facilitate others beyond safe that is ultimately to ensure survival of yourself to ensure survival of others you have to be very alert you have to be very conscious so for every behavior of us there is a reason there is a function of our consciousness so according to functionalists we have evolved to be conscious beings otherwise we cease to exist although functionalism is generally not in practice today this school of thought greatly influenced psychology like the development of behaviorism and applied psychology consciousness was not the only mental concept that functionalism investigated james was interested in emotions and how and why our minds perceive stimuli in certain ways the most important contribution by william james in understanding emotions is the james lange theory of emotion which proposes that an event triggers a physiological reaction which we then interpret according to this theory emotions are caused by our interpretations of these physiological reactions it is only after the interpretation of a physiological reaction which we also call it as arousal a person experiences emotion if the arousal is not noticed or not given any thought then a person will not experience any emotion based on this event to experience emotion we must go through a series of steps according to william james first is perception of a stimuli or situation second bodily changes result from the perception of a situation third recognition of the bodily changes produce subjective feelings or emotions so what we understand from this theory according to this theory people feel sad because they cry that is the physiological arousal is crying and what is the emotion that they are experiencing sad similarly people feel happy because they smile once you see that someone is smiling you will infer that they are in a happy mood so based upon the physiological arousal and how we are interpreting it a person experiences the emotion now let us summarize you might have understood what are the different views postulated by different theorists from different schools structuralists have focused on the structure of the mind how the mind can be divided into different parts that is elements and introspection can be used as a technique to analyze the elements of the mind however as a reaction to the structuralism the functionalism has emerged on the field of psychology it says it is not the dissection of the mind or components of the mind which is important to understand human behavior but we should understand the functions of the mind in order to understand the purpose of the behavior